So uh, let me just leave you with a scientific perspective that um, you know, people look up at night and many people feel small. That's understandable because, in fact, you are small. We are small. Uh, we're small. Just You thought Felix Bumgarner's jump was high up. It's not, okay? So not only was that not big, we're not big. All right, we're not big not only in space, but in time and size. There's very little that would otherwise distinguish us, except for our capacity to wonder, to be curious. It's been suggested that humans are, are among the, this is speculation, but I, it's intriguing speculation. Humans among all animals, especially mammals, are the only ones who are completely comfortable sleeping on our backs. Think about how vulnerable other animals are. We sleep on our backs, no problem. We also sleep at night. Well, if you sleep on your back at night and you wake up, what are you looking at? The night sky, the lights in the void of darkness. It may be that our cosmic curiosity, for which I used to think I was biased. Yeah, I'm cosmically curious, but why should I think others are as well? You are. I'm not biased. I know you are. <laughs> if there's a light in the sky moving, you're going to stop and take a look at it. Mm -hmm. The universe intrigues us all. There may be some genetically encoded force that we illuminate, that we bring forward when we look up at night and wonder, where did we come from? Where are we now? Where are we headed in the future? And the cosmic perspective is one where all of Earth is one. Because though this be 20 inches across, with political boundaries identified, when actually viewed from space, it's just ocean, land, and atmosphere. From space, we are not compelled to divide ourselves because we occupy this lone, frail spaceship Earth. And when you are not compelled to divide yourself, there's the urge to say we're in this together. We're in this so much together that You know, you think of family, and you say, that's my family, but you're not in my family. Excuse me. The boundary between what is in family and what is not is completely culturally determined. It's cultural. Because any two of us in this room, if you go far enough back the tree of life, have a common ancestor. So we could draw it that far back and say, we are family. You can keep going back and find the common ancestor with the rest of the apes, with dogs, with an oak tree. We have DNA in common. And there's so many people who want to say we are special because we're different. But I have a different, I, I, I say we are special because we are the same. Mm. We are part of this, this world where we have DNA in common with yeast, with oak trees, with the, the, uh, the insects that scurry under brush. These are, this is the commonality of life on Earth. And then you learn about molecules and atoms. We have the same atoms that are in stars. So now you look up, it's we are common with the universe as well. So for me, the cosmic perspective, which I know if people had, you would never be leading armies into battle. Do you know how ridiculous it looks to the person with the cosmic perspective that one general says to the other, I'm going to conquer that land across this line. You're you going to do what? What? On this spec you call Earth? You, you're going to wage, you want to kill people? For what? For, for oil? For energy? For real? I, we got to look what, what? The cosmic perspective reorders what is important in this world. And it does it in, I think, the noblest of ways, by recognizing not what makes us all different, but what makes us all common, together, alone, with the fate of our planet and our civilization in our hands.